I'm invincible. I'm paying money. Uh, the girl's happy. She's got no money. I got my rocks off. Oh, how good is this? <laughs> Welcome to the Bound for Glory off-season edition. We're going to be reviewing the draft today. We've got a few experts in here, or experts. so-called experts. Uh, my yeah, name's I'll, Peter. I wouldn't go so far as calling us experts. I'm Matt. I'm Ben. Maddie. Hi, Maddie. Sure, we should introduce. We got a newbie over here, Maddie. Hi, Maddie. And um, uh, I'm Paige. Yeah, hi, Paige. Again. Yeah, you're, you've been here twice now, so you don't get any special treatment. <laughs> no, I wouldn't think so. At the uh, national draft yesterday, a few shockers, a few things we sort of really expected. Uh, we're also going to have an interview with Emma Quayle, which we had before, which is quite interesting, about 10 minutes long. A few interesting nuggets in that interview. Too. Nuggets. <laughs> yes, nuggets Is that what we call scoops now? Nuggets. Scoops, nuggets, nuggets, nuggets. of gold. <laughs> That's no, no thanks. Particularly uh, regarding Carl Reimers. Oh, don't. Okay, yeah, 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 there's something in there about Matt's Kyle Reimers. Matt's best mate. Yeah, look, we're going to move on to the national draft now before I break something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the first uh, first pick was pretty obvious. Everyone yeah. knew it from the start of the year, really. Um, Lockie Whitfield, um, Danny Nong Stingrays. <laughs> He's some of Logu played in the TAC Cup. Did some Hales stuff. from uh, Mornington, plays with Mount Martha. Um, and basically, he's a classy midfielder, you know, can use both sides, um, like all the good ones can nowadays. Um, AIS, yeah, AFL yeah. Academy. Extraordinarily graduate. rare for an inside yeah. player to be very good with, with by foot. You only get that yeah. in your top tier, you know, A-grade midfielders. Yeah, and he can play outside, which is the bonus too, but he's... He's um, a huge great. tank as well. He's got a beep test time of 15 plus as well, so he'll be able to run all day. He'll be a walk-up star. It's not really saying much, but he'll be a walk-up star for GWS. Moving on to the second pick, uh, Jonathan O'Rourke. Um, this this was a guy who jumped up the order a little bit. He was a bulldog for yeah. It was while. he was basically going to be selected with the Bulldogs at pick five for for 24 hours before, and then all of a sudden he was pick two for GWS. And in the meantime, he pushed out Tumpus as well. So he, uh, he even Tumpus considered to be a top three pick. O'Rourke came he, into the picture and. A, uh, uh, Almost got pushed out. Yeah, of course, he was an incredibly good player for Calder this year. And he, he was another excellent ball user, so they're making sure they um, stock up on them because obviously with the game um, the way it is, uh, that we need the better ball users and also athletes as well. So Average of 18.5 disposals at 77% disposal efficiency at, for playing for Vic Metro. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Obviously, it's different say, playing that sort of football against other kids than playing it against professional footballers, but that's huge. Uh, he deserves a second pick, really. And the third uh, pick, again to GWS, because they just decided to take them all. <laughs> that wasn't funny. I think greedy. mini-draft um, raw of 2012. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> finished now. They can't be greedy <laughs> anymore. Um, well, they leave um, the picks to Richmond again. <laughs> <all right. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Lockie Plowman, um, obviously he's a key defender. Uh, it's almost incredible that he went at top three, considering he'd played no games whatsoever in the National Carnival, and he was out for four months with an elbow injury. So that's how much they rate him. Yeah, and he's another one from Calder. They did very well. Was it seven they had drafted? Seven all up. Yeah, yeah, so... I think recruiters are also impressed with his very positive outlook. Like, he was always ready for the next challenge, and... You know, he rehabbed quite well yeah. as well. He was very diligent. Yeah, he, he and Davis will make a good combination in years to come, up that end. Definitely. And pick. speaking of GWS, if you add O'Rourke and Whitfield to a midfield that already has the likes of Sheil, Ward... Canilio, Green. Yeah, that's, Adam, that's exactly Green. They're adding those kids. It may not be a force next year, but geez, in a few years, if they keep all of those prospect. kids together, yeah. that is going to be the best midfield by and they're, far. They're obviously, um, GWS obviously building this culture where people want to be there. Had all those kids signing uh, just after the season had finished. So if they can teach those kids to that same sort of culture, <laughs> then they're going to be a great football club. Moving on, pick number four, Melbourne Demons. Jimmy Tumpus from Woodville West Torrens. Jimmy. He's a, uh, a very lightning fast sort of midfielder. He can play both inside and outside. Um, he kicked that amazing goal in the 2011 Grand Final as well. The 2011 it Grand Final from the National Championships. It was fantastic. Sensational. Was it, a, was it a point or a goal? That was a, It was a goal. Oh, well. It was a goal. No, it was in the Senefal. He 
kicked oh, a, win a winning well, goal in the Santa Fe. <laughs> that was it's Jackson McRae who kicked okay, the winning well, point, who well, came a really, bit later. That's really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see, what nickname are we going with here? Tumpus. Yeah. Jimmy. Jim. Is it Jimmy or Dimitri? Because Dimitri? He, he's born. He, <laughs> he's actually from? born his real name is Dimitri. Dimitri. No. You're yep. shitting me. But his grandma. He was very similar to his grandpa. He was very had similar traits to his grandpa, and his grandpa's name was Jimmy. So his family's called him Jimmy since he was a young kid. All right then. <laughs> I think the best nickname um, nomination so far is Tomb Raider. <laughs> oh, that's oh yeah, here that's we go. Classy. It's very that is good. classy. But he's um he's a start up for Melbourne. Again, that's not saying a whole lot at the moment. But he's a start up. He's they need of, some class in that midfield. Yeah, and he's he's silky as they come. And uh, pick five, we finally move on to the Bulldogs. They had a couple in a row, and their first one was Jake Stringer. Um, he, he's just a giant tank. He's like a Josh Kennedy who can play forward. Like He's probably he's one of the only key forwards in this whole draft that is built for football. I mean, he's 190 centimetres tall, 93 kilograms. He's a beast. As we heard during the season, he's a combination of Pavlich, Martin and Goddard. Yeah, all <laughs> yes, we had a, to fill in people, we had an interview with him and he, he likened himself to all of those players. So obviously he's a Brown Low medal winning, Coleman winning, Grand best final. backman winning freak. <laughs> Machine. Yeah, so yeah, Bulldogs, that's pretty cheap to get him for a pick five, I think. Another pick for the Bulldogs is at pick number six, Jackson McRae. He's our golden point boy. He's the, he's the kid. There we go. There the, we the golden go. point for the Oakley Chargers in the they, in the grand final this year in the TSC Cup. He was outstanding. And he won best on ground too. We mentioned before that, um, I can't think of who we were talking about, he had 18 average, was average of 18 disposals and 77%. Well, he's very much McRae, a... McRae went at 19.4 disposals and 78%. Ooh, that's a good stat yeah, there. Yeah, took you quite Wow. <laughs> well, look, he's very much in the mould. He's He isn't overly built for the type of role that he'll be playing at AFL level, so he will need to get into the gym. But on skill alone, a lot of recruiters have said that he's very much in the mould of a Scott Pendlebury who just finds uh, traffic quite easier than most. And uh, like the next pick uh, was down at seven for Port Adelaide, Ollie Wines. Oh, I don't know whether he can take a good photo. In yeah, anything. no, look, this kid is definitely a candidate for the Waterhead Foundation. <laughs> um, he's a lovely kid, by the way. I'm sure he's, he's a fan. So we do love Ollie. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's a great footballer as well, but Jesus. He, <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you've seen the photo of him when he had his port jumper on by himself. He, he looks like he's about to bust down in tears, the poor kid. And I would too. Anyway, moving on to a bit about him, actually. Average 24.2 disposals for Vic Country. He's the best inside midfielder in the competition. Oh, by oh, far. By, yep. by far. Yep. And he'll, he'll be another start-up for Port Adelaide as well, and that's really going to help out in their midfield because they need somebody who can go in and win that hard ball because not a whole load of them can, really, if we're going to be honest. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Ollie Wine's going to Port. Um, that left uh, Brisbane to go to Sam Mays, who... Eight, yep, yeah. North Adelaide kid, another Sandful bloke. Um, he's also another bloke that can just walk into that Brisbane midfield... Uh, not midfield, excuse me, the sort of half-forward line. He's well, he'll probably that. play between midfield and forward because he's not really cut out to be a key forward as such, but he's just got an incredible vertical leap that means that he plays really... Really tall, takes play, good marks he as did well. Play in the midfield during the under eighteen competition, yeah. but I think at AFL level, you probably want to utilise his goal kicking. Well, ability. he's he's got the cleanest kick in in this yeah, draft he's one of by the best kicks. by a long no, mile, no, no, and that'll be utilised. Is he almost like a? I guess the way that not the same type, but the way Steve Johnson's sort of later in very the career much, gone into the midfield. very much, and that's probably where yeah. Brisbane are going to see him because he's got that ability to to kick those impossible goals and show a bit of cheek as well, but also dip in the midfield as he gets older. Pick number nine, Richmond have taken Nick Vlosten from the Northern Knights. I think he's one of the, the, the fair few guys that went in the first round from the Northern Knights. But anyway, um, he's a fantastic footballer, another guy who's just ready-made. There's a lot in these first one or two rounds that are probably going to see a lot of, of time in the seniors next year. Um, played for Vic Metro, uh, won All-Australian honours. There's not a whole lot more you can say about him. He's just solid, completely solid. He's basically solid. like a reincarnation of Damien Hardwick. Essentially, a yeah. young version. Very much so. Started that's a, the that's ball, a good, has including a head. the hair colour. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's just, Ranger. you know, like his mum used to call him Tigger when he was younger because yeah. he'd fall over and just get back up again. We had an interview so. with him as well in our, our last 
uh, little Ripper guy. Podcast. Ripper. And he's a really nice guy. He's very genuine, it seems. I think he's, Richmond are going to get a lot out of some, having a player like him. I and mean, he oozes leadership too. I, I know that you know, draft highlights don't say everything about a player, but he threw himself around at the ball and his opponents and he a lot of tackles, and that'll help Richmond because it's you know inside help for players like Cochin and Deledio and they're really... And he'll probably you know, be utilised as well with Newman coming towards the end of his career and he'll fill that gap quite well coming out of the back line. Yeah, well, um, the next pick, which we all knew before the draft, is Mr Joe Danaher. Yeah, uh, no Sir Danaher, then. as he would yeah. like to be called. Yeah, Lord Danaher. Uh, um, he's, he's certainly got, not an attitude, but the a, prodigal a son. smug sense of it. I think all key forwards need to have that sort of thing. I mean, the best key forwards are a little bit What are you smug. trying to say? Has he got swag? He's a little bit. you got a little bit he's of swag. He's a great well, big dirty <laughs> bastard who knows how to lead at the footy. And that's <laughs> exactly what you've got. I mean, anybody who destroys in the way that he did in the national championships deserves to be a bit smug. I mean, we went and watched this kid play. He's just, a, he's fantastic. Yeah. He, he towers over them. If, if he gets his kicking straight, he'll yeah. kill them. Because he kicked something like four goals, what, eight or something? Yeah. Like, it was something it was ridiculous like that. He could have killed them more. Um, I, I guess there were a few times where he thought he was going to get a few and he didn't. He celebrated yeah. a little too early, including before he actually took the mark. Oh, that was uh, ridiculous. So, but, but he's a good footballer. He's a very good footballer. Essendon fans are absolutely pumped him. I would caution them not to expect him to be a champion next year, as most key forwards usually aren't. But you know, in the coming two or three years, they're going to have a fantastic forward line with Cramery, uh, Hurley and Danaher. That's just going to be unstoppable. And and he is um, a lighter key forward. So uh, And they did say he would have pushed for one, two, three in that range if he was there. Yeah. So He'll mostly definitely get VFL time mostly next definitely. year. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favourite term. I use it a lot and it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Pick 11, Carlton picked up Troy Menzel. He was meant supposedly to go in the top five or top six, but the uh, knee injuries that he's had have made him slide down to Carlton. Carlton said this morning, actually, that they were over the moon that he was still there and he was the, the first name that they had on their list, so obviously that's a well, the success there. touching on Troy Menzel, we discussed earlier anyway, that the knee injuries that, he's ha- that he has had haven't come because of a, a structural issue. It's been purely knock. due yep. to knocks and collisions. And, I mean, that's that's a great positive to spin off what's been already a, an injury-raveled junior career so far. I don't think how many kids can say this, that they kick nine goals and six goals consecutively in their first two games in the under-18 competition. Not a bad start. Especially... Even if it was against Tasmania. Yeah, we, we, we should <laughs> disclaimer Tasmania. that it's Tassie in Northern and, Territory. Well, look, still not... Yeah, still, I, I, I know, mean, it's still a good effort. Franklin kicked 13 goals, even though it was against North Melbourne, so... <laughs> oh, I'm roping you in, Ben. I'm roping you in right now. Ouch. Sucker punch. Back to GWS, seeing as they're pick hogs. Christian Jack, Jack, is it Jacks? Jacks. Jacks. Christian Jacks from the Oakley Chargers. That is some eyebrow. He's got some eyebrow. This kid. Uh, if you see, if you find a picture, we're so horrible to people, aren't we? Um, he's a fantastic footballer, though, so it doesn't really matter. Average five point six marks as a key defender. Um, you can play forward as well. He's another guy who, who who walk into GWS. I think that they needed someone like him, and they got him perfectly. Another one who kicked six goals against Tassie. So, what the hell yeah, was Tazzy doing? Geez, Tazzy, you're getting a bit Don't of a... Don't recruit like, Tazzy defenders. It was, it was nine goals against Tazzy. Tasmania yeah. and six so against obviously Northern they've Tazzy. had 15 goals kicked against them in two matches. But just on that, two, uh, two Tasmanian defenders, key defenders, did get picked up in Thurlow and Sickens, so we'll can't have been that too bad. Maybe they were sick, I don't know. Gold Coast had their first pick at pick 13, where they picked up Jesse Lonigan from Launceston. I love this kid. This kid is... He's basically a prototype of Josh Caddy. He's going to do, uh, win the hard ball, <laughs> get it out I know of his attitude. <laughs> Without the off, you know, the attitude problems. But he's going to be a perfect complement for Gary Ablett in that midfield. 182 centimetres, 90 kilograms. He's a monster yeah. already. He's a machine. He's Yeah, he's going to bulldoze kids. He looks like he wants to hit somebody. I'm sure he doesn't. But <laughs> Uh, 5.3 tackles a game um, at the Champs, so that could be really that good goes dream with, team. That goes <laughs> with 16.3 disposals as well, so it's not just a, uh, a tackling machine. He tackles and wins the football, and that's you know, all you can ask for. And back to GWS, pick number 14, Aiden Kaur, comes from the Northern Knights, tall defender, uh, very agile sort of kid, another AIS, AFL Academy kid, um, 
Again, another walk up for GWS. He, he really, he really jumped up the order, didn't he? Because he was a second to third round prospect not long ago, and then he sort of just jumped right up. He jumped up the order because a lot of recruiters have have noted that yes, he's a project player and he's going to take time, but the, I think because tall players for tall players that can rebound are very, very you know, like in that Ben Reed mold that you know you can not only play on someone, but you can run off and use it well, similar to the boy that went at number three for GWS, so completely a ploughman. In that sort of, you know, well, he's They big, are best friends as well, so that's a bit of a, a fairy tale for them to meet up at GWS. Well, and I think... Um, that's at GWS. <laughs> <laughs> and GWS seems to have addressed that issue with Homsch leaving to go to Port Adelaide. They've got that another rebounding defender. So if you put him and Jax along with um, you know the defenders they've got in Davis and Moore, they're going to have a pretty exciting backline as well. Uh, we we'll get down to pick 15, which is where Taylor Garner managed to make his way to North. So Ben Ben will probably have a good word to say about him. Taylor Garner, he's more, he's not built. He's going to take a lot of time to put on muscle, but 100, he's 186 centimeters, 76 kilograms. He's, he's a feather. He's just Tiny had a, uh, a shoulder reconstruction as well after dislo- well, dislocating it four or five times throughout the championship. He'll join the shoulder club at North Melbourne. There's a few players who are already <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in rehab. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, but um, he's more good user of the ball, makes good decisions. You know, in that Kieran Harper, I'd liken, liken him to Kieran Harper very much. Yeah, he looks like a talented prospect there. Uh, the next one is Jackson Thurlow, another Tassie boy. Pick 16 going down to Geelong. Defender, um, I think a lot of people didn't really have him top 20. Or probably in the first. second round is where a lot of people probably yeah. saw him, but given the... Geelong had pick 16, and then the next pick after that was in the 70s. They needed to bring in that that sort of player. They had to bite the bullet then and there if they were going to do it. They have, and as a result, he plays both ends of the ground, which will be handy. You can see why the Cats have picked him. He averaged 24.6 disposals and 6.6 marks as a defender playing in the under-18 under competition. Yeah. It, it's really hard to you look at those sort of numbers depending on how he used it really but you look at those sort of numbers and you think well he sort of deserves to go the first round I think Geelong have got themselves a little winner there actually pick 17 Fremantle coming in with their first pick Josh Simpson from East uh, East Fremantle a guy from the WAFL obviously trying to keep this players sort of in WA um very lightning quick light, again lightning Absolutely. quick midfield sort of forward kind of guy he's a goal sneak um, the great so thing is about him as well, he wins his own ball when he dips yep. in the midfield, which isn't a, a very a big trait you see with a lot of players similar to the type of player that he is. The WAFL has a lot of players that are those really fast, natural, flary footballers sort of thing. and There's a lot of them, and this guy's he's sort of like... Oh, he'll, be, he'll be fantastic. I mean, although Fremantle have received a bit of a cop for their lack of pace but they did get Daniel Pierce through free agency who comes in to help Hill and now they're going to have another outside runner in Simpson and that'll be fantastic for Freo. And with Adelaide handing in their two picks of pick 20 and pick 54 we've got those three Collingwood picks on a row. Pick at, at pick 18 Brody Grundy a ready-made Ruckman. Pick 19 Ben Kennedy and pick 20 Tim Broomhead. Grundy first of all um, he's sort of, I guess, most of people saw him as the only quality ruckman in the draft, and it was incredible that he slid down to pick 18. It's a bit of a ruckman's curse, isn't it? We've seen that in most times that recruiters are reluctant to spend a first round selection, especially when it's early, on a on a ruckman who they mostly prefer to develop, which is what usually happens. But in Grundy's case, at 202 centimeters and 100 odd kilos. He uh, he'll be he'll come in probably straight away for Collingwood and probably into the forward line as well. Definitely a big slider there, and it's interesting enough to know that his uh, best mate is Ben Kennedy, who went right next to him. Yeah, yeah. So and he, he's a, another one of those small, quick sort of players that's out of the um, SANFL, I believe, at Glen Elg. Um, small midfield, small midfield slash forward kid, raking left foot. No, he's he's only small, 174 centimeters. He's got a light frame as well. But um, no, he's one to keep your eye on for the future, definitely. And that last Collingwood pick, as we said, was Tim Broomhead. The first two were sort of, um, most people somewhat expected them to go. Tim Broomhead, he was uh, touted to go as a second rounder, maybe even as a third rounder. I think 
the reason Collingwood have gone down that line to bring in Broomhead is because they really do, and like we'll hear from Emma soon, is that they really do like that Emma midfield Quayle, that depth. Yes, Emma Quayle. Uh, they love that midfield depth. And also, one thing that all three of those picks all had in common was the fact that they've all played consecutive senior football this year, which means that uh, Derek Hine believes that they will come in Seriously, next though, year. Broomhead. Awesome name. Well, yeah, Collingwood are starting a trend, aren't they? There's Tyson Goldsack. There's still side bottom now. There's Tim Broomhead. So we're playing the Shannon name Cox game. As well. We did have Brad Dick, Shannon Cox. There's there's been a few. So it's interesting. It's like reading the back of a VH a porno VHS from 1970. <laughs> Where does that come from? I don't know. See, what you were been you doing, doing before the show? <laughs> it's interesting to note as well that these all these kids, none of them are from Victoria. They're all from SANFL they all and WAFL. They've played in the same team, so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, moving on, the Bulldogs' second pick, the uh, third pick of the first round, Nathan Rovat, uh, Northern Knights. Yeah, d- don't mention it. No, what's what's the story, Paige? Look, I'm a bit. Um I'm a bit upset. It's bit of a man crush. Look, everybody crush, has work. been well documented that I am in love with this kid. I've seen him play <laughs> since since the under fourteens, under sixteens. He killed it this year. Very Nathan, if guy. you're listening, I do love you. I will expect a Hravat jumper next year. <laughs> Even though it's gonna be in the Bulldogs, I'm quite happy to get it. So if you can get it to me, I'm still a fan. I'm still disappointed that you didn't get to Collingwood, but We'll let that one, go. One Vic Metro's MVP award as well, an average 25.2 disposals. Ten of them are contested. And that's, that's saying something for a kid. He's only 175 centimetres tall as well. He's, a, he's a, certainly he, he a goer. He plays tall. He's, he's all heart. And the next pick went to Sydney uh, with pick 22 to Dean Towers. And I guess that's our first sort of, um, you know, mature age person there. Um, so coming from North Ballarat, is that the lot there? 22 years old, this guy as well. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> he seems he's a defender and midfielder, but I think he'll be a really good replacement for some of the Swans' you know, ageing sort of backline. They don't have a very useful backline down there, so I think he'll fit in nicely there. And he brings that contested hard edge that all of the Swans' midfielders have, so he'll fit right in. And it wouldn't be a surprise to see him play some early games next year, I think. First, uh, not first, the final selection of the first round in the draft went to Marco Paparoni, and I don't think he was expected to go first round at all. He's a lump of a lad, that bloke. The AFL website had him going in the top 30, roughly, and I think he seems like a project player, but from what I've read, he has, you know, he's had quite uh, good statistics and. So he seems like he can get quite a bit of the footy and provide that second lead-up option alongside Brown. So it, it says here that his beep test was 15 plus and for he's, a key he's forward. He's that is amazing. Yeah. He's well, one, one recruiter actually likened him a lot to a Nick Rewalt in the sense yeah. that he actually plays further up the ground, yeah, doesn't works, mind sort of works his opponent off over his, as well. Yeah, exactly. By the time it's the third or fourth quarter, and you've have a player that's able to walk all around yeah. the place and jog up the wings like and down 15. The Fifteen plus is like a Watson, a Swan, a Ablett that's type ridiculous. range. That's that's it, unbelievable. It's great because it's not only it's tiring your opponent you know, for a key, you know, because you'll play on a key defender and they're not, you know, mobile or thing. But you also create that space. Like if you look what Collingwood, I wouldn't say Travis Cloak has a massive, a massive tank, but what he does when he leads up the ground, it all opens it up. It creates space yeah. and it gives those smaller guys room to move into. Moving on to the second round of the draft, yeah, St Kilda kicking off things with the first two picks. At pick 24, they pick Nathan Wright, who's sort of a rebound, half-back sort of kind of guy. Spencer White, who's a key forward, taken at pick 25. We'll start with Nathan Wright. Um, he's a he's built this kind of... He's, he's, doesn't necessarily have the the weight, but he's built as far as a football player goes. I'm not certain about the Saints taking him at pick 24, I think. Well, Maybe they could have taken him a bit later. He's always been speculated to be a roughly top 30 pick, and he's absolutely lightning quick. The way he springs out of packs and runs and carries the ball is exactly what the Saints need. His kicking has been a bit of an issue in the past, um, but... I guess the recruiters have seen enough talent in him to overlook that. Um, Moving on to Spencer White, the key forward. Now, this was sort of surprising, seeing as 
Um, we, men- we mentioned in, in, in the interview coming up with Emma Quayle that sort of the Saints really need to pick out a, a key defender rather than a key forward, and they took a key forward. He's a good key forward, but they don't necessarily need him. Must have known that Collingwood wanted him. I think, <laughs> apart from that, I think that the you know, Rewald and Kaziski and Kaziski maybe has been mooted to move to the back line potentially next or the year. We'll reserves. see how that works or out. The um, line, maybe. But if Spencer White comes on and St Kilda has a forward line eventually of Rewalt, Stanley and White, that's going to be a pretty hard forward line to be. When you throw in the small types like Lee and you've still got your um you know your Sards and your Maleras in there as well. And it's interesting to note that as we were talking about good key forwards, that uh, Spencer White scored 2.89 in the 20-metre sprint, which is very good for a key forward. Like, that's another... I think St Kilda not picking a key forward, it tells you how confident they, they are. Key he back, is. sorry. <laughs> a key back. Um, they, how confident they are of getting Brown next year. And uh, pick 26, we have another one that we knew that was already going to go there, and it's a bit of a steal with Jack Viney going yeah. to Melbourne. I'm, it's a father-son selection. I'm really surprised that nobody really would have given up a pick beforehand when they were going through all that sort of wheeling and dealing before. But anyway, getting him at pick 26 is a ridiculous this is steal. draft tampering one at yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk about that. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Pick 27, GWS James Stewart from Sandringham Dragons. Uh, big towering sort of bloke, 198 centimetres tall. He's only small. He's got 80 kilogram frame on him. Uh, can play his little bit of time in the ruck. He's played in a competition in the VFL that's sort of not in the VFL, excuse me. Uh, I'm going crazy. Uh, in a, in a competition where there aren't really a whole lot of tall guys. So I think he was sort of struggle when he takes that step up, maybe as most tall guys do. But he needs to hit. He needs to hit the gym. That's the thing. He's, he's got the height, but he, he's. A feather of a kid. And Collingwood chose not to nominate him, um, so it was interesting. Obviously, they knew that GWS were keen on him and they weren't going to... That's right, they could have um, taken him under a father-son selection. His, son, his father, Craig Stewart, played enough games for Collingwood. Moving on, Hawthorne's first selection at pick 28, Tim O'Brien from Glenelg. Um, this guy has X-Factor written all over him. He, has, he really does have that ability to burst games open off his own foot. He can turn games around... He, he's that sort of player that can kick a few goals in quick succession and then all of a sudden a team that's four or five goals down are right back in the hunt straight off O'Brien's boot. He's Tas- a great player. Tasmania are sort of coming whipping boys at the moment. Kick six goals against them in the uh, national... Co- let's what is going on, Tassie? Jesus, you Tassie. coach. <laughs> coach. <laughs> Port Adelaide have two picks back to back at pick 29 and pick 30. First one went to Tom Clory, second one to Mason Shaw. Tom Clory, he's a, uh, a defender, big defender, another guy who needs to fill out his body. Most of them really need to hit the weights. But um, all Vic Country boys, their first three picks. Yep. And uh, did a big backflip considering they were looking to bring in South Australian guys and ended up taking Victorians. Um, Mason Shaw. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's moved states, what? Get but I think, I think Cleary, especially after losing Chaplin, if they can develop him and hopefully get him to play some games next year, he will be a big addition to their back line. And moving on to Shaw, we were talking about the beat test before. This guy is 198 centimetres and got 14 plus on the beat test, so he's another guy who's got plenty of insurance about him. Um, He's a goal-kicking machine, I think, this guy. I think he's he's really one of those steals. I mean, a lot of people think that he could have gone 30-plus. He looks like he's ready to play football. Well, he could have easily gone that first round as well, but he probably slid quite... Yes, towards the second half of the year, he had a bit of a quiet... It was his championships that disappointed, I yes. think. He just was not sighted anywhere. Um, then again, At Dale Colts Garland level, just right. killed it during the championships, mm. but because of his off-field issues. We'll get on to that. Well, I think we'll talk about that a little bit later. Moving on to Richmond, Camden McIntosh from Peel Thunder. He's a tall defender. Um, this guy, I think, he's sort of a project, maybe a little bit. I of really project. like him. He um, he bodies up really well, and he, he's got that ability to hold his own. He probably needs to put on a little bit of weight, but on talent alone, he's a great spoiler. He produces a bit of run. As well, considering his height, uh, he'll he'll be a perfect fit. He really will. Another forward who met who who got fifteen plus on the beat test was Brisbane's pick at number thirty two, Michael Close. Is it Close or Close? Close. 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 Oh, sorry. Well, he's <laughs> he's a if he's been incredibly unfortunate with injuries, but he is such a versatile player. He's probably one player that I took the most interest in where he'd go in the draft, purely because he plays 
key forward very well, key back very well, and he is a very good ruckman. So he's just about ticks every box. Back to Richmond at pick 33, Liam McBean, uh, the second of the best ruckman. I think there's only about three or four that really could have been selected. The second ruckman, he's a giant, 203 centimetres, but... Well, he's not, he, although Very he's thin. sort of a ruckman, he actually played his entire championships down key back, yep. Vic Metro. So that shows that he's got some versatility as well. And obviously with Graham going over to Adelaide, their rock stocks are a little low at Richmond, so it's a good opportunity. And uh, with the next pick, Essendon pounced on Jason Ashby. Jason. <laughs> Can't say Jason, Jason Ashby from he's, Oakley Chargers. Chargers. Um, yeah, he's a good defender. Um, Really sort of smart and knows how to use the footy. Um, yeah, yeah. He's very good on the rebound too. Can take a, a, defend, a defensive mark. Really does back himself into a contest as well, which is which is something you really can't teach. And with pick 35, Carlton went with Tom Tomei um, from the Sandy Dragons. That's it. Uh, played with Vic Metro. Uh, 18.8 disposals. He averaged at 77.3%. Dis, uh, percent. He's a rebound defender. Sort of kid, I guess, Carlton... Didn't necessarily he's have to get, but he's a small lockdown defender that really produces a bit of runoff half back. He's probably someone that Carlton really don't have, although Yaron plays that role down there. Tamay really is that nuggety defender who can take on those really annoying small forwards. And last year in the championships, he did a total number, and Lockie Whitfield absolutely shut him out of the game. So he has that ability to play on mediums or smalls and to shut them down whilst also providing the run. So I think he'll be a very valuable pickup for Carlton. The next pick went to Frio at pick 36, uh, Tanner Smith uh, from North Ballarat Rebels. And basically he's a Big boy key he defender. Yeah. And, um, 195, he's got good weight on him. and yeah. he's, not a, he's not a hugely... Uh, doesn't rack up big numbers as a key defender. I think he's a bit like a Simon Prestigiacomo in that sense that he... He spoils well, his closing speed's there. Uh, he does everything you'd ask of a key defender. Doesn't like to kick the ball. Any, any opportunity he gets, he'll always handball it or give it for someone else. But they'll have a real find in this bloke. Yep. He'll, he'll be great for Freo going forward. This is a really interesting one with pick 37. North Melbourne picked up Ben Jacobs, who, who left Port Adelaide so that he could come down and play for North. But... Essendon supposedly was going to pick him up with pick 34 instead of taking Jason Ashby, and then he slid to 37. I guess that's sort of a win-win for both North and Jacob, seeing as they've got the clubs that they want to, but it's still quite an interesting scenario. It's an interesting scenario in that Jacobs would have been taken in 2010 with the pick that North got with Attlee, but... You know, Bryce Lewis and the team, uh, the recruitment team down at North Melbourne, they were obviously stunned that Atlee fell that far. Obviously, Essendon famously were interested and they created the video and it leaked online and the rest is history. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but aside from that, I think that he's there for midfield depth. I think with North Melbourne's strategy, with a lot of live picks in this draft, I think six in total, uh, th the idea was because a lot of... You know, sort of players that weren't in the team every week with your Macintosh, your Campbell. It was about taking out that depth and then replacing it to say, okay, who else can we add to the best 22? They picked up Gisbards and some others that we're going to discuss later. Even then, Jacobs will probably come in straight away around one next year, given that Boomer's out for the first six weeks as well. So that's a good, a good cover-up job there for North. Collingwood's pick 38 was used to choose Jackson Ramsey from East Perth. Uh, this guy was started off quite well for WA in the under-18s, then he managed to go down with a bit of an injury. Um, composed sort of defender, fast bloke. Um, He's a bit of a utility. He plays over the ground. I mean, he can, Collingwood really see him as probably a, a very good defender for them, that small to medium size. He'd be sized. more of a, a future player as well. I think of, there's, yeah, a there's a lot of, a bit of, a lot of discussion. Within. With Harry O'Brien, he he's, he could fit the mould of a Harry O'Brien as well because Harry's sort of well, declined he's got a that, little bit. He's got that, uh, that when he gets the ball, all of a sudden excitement happens around him. So he gets the ball, he likes to run with it. He's got really good leg speed and Collingwood have, have really lacked that coming out of their fence. The next pick was Max Duffy, another West Australian who went to Frio. Uh, with pick 39, yep, another forward bloke. Um, again, another pacey sort of forward. There seems to be a fair few of them going around at the moment. Well, he ended up kicking 33 goals yep. in the yeah. under-18 competition. Yeah. So, so, yeah, he's uh, quite a good get. And then we went to Brody Murdoch for St for, Kilda. Yeah, I'm 40. sort of... I like yeah. Brody Murdoch. He's very much, and I was saying to Matty earlier, was that I see him very much as in a Corey 
and right sort of role, a dasher off half back, good user, a good rebounder. He's got a bit of uh, leg speed as well. I think yeah, maybe this he could have been selected at pick forty, but um, maybe we'll discuss it a bit later. St Kilda's picks, I think they sort of missed the ball there. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> pick forty one, North Melbourne, Mason Wood from the Geelong Falcons. What are you snickering over there, Peter? <laughs> no, just tell me. No, it's just okay. Just taking on maybe St Kilda in between. It's, oh, well, look, yeah, get a take chance. St Kilda supporters. <laughs> Another Mason Wood's one. Yep, Mason Wood pick. 41, Mason Wood. Uh, he, he's, he fell away big yep. time. He, at one stage, there was one who, person who will go unnamed who had him at pick 15 to North Melbourne. <laughs> pick 15. That's a oh, bit well, surprising. Look, but North Melbourne got him in the end anyway. Well, yeah, I guess yeah, they got him in the end. Yeah, He's a forward. Um, I guess with the departure of Aaron Edwards, again, it's about creating depth again and then looking if that player is worthy to slip into the best 22. Robbie Tarrant and Lockie Hanson, we still don't know whether signs are obviously looking better than they were 12 months ago, but we don't know if they are going to make it in the end. So obviously you need to have with him and Aaron Black and Tom Curran, there's always you know that backup just in case. And with pick 42, Richmond took uh, one of my boys, Matthew McDonoghue. Oh, McDonough. Um, from Woodbull, Woodville, West Torrance. Can't say anything today. Um, basically, he's like a Jason Paul Pleasure, if you want to think of it that way. He's a little bit shorter, though, obviously. Only 179. But he really impressed at the champs. He's um, an All-Australian player as well. Yeah, so he did um, quite well. Average of 3.4 goals per game during the competition as well, so that's pretty impressive. It's fantastic. St Kilda pick 33, Josh Saunders, again from Geelong Falcons. Um, Matty, you're ready to pounce, so this, go crazy. This kid... I watching his highlights last night. I admit I hadn't heard much about him, but he looks like he could possibly be the next Lenny Hayes. Oh, in, no. <laughs> oh here we go! In here not go. not in terms of <laughs> talent. Excited, yet. Thank that you leaves a lot to. I watched I watched the YouTube video last night, and I don't want to get too excited, but he could be the next. I'm Lenny. sorry. Not in terms of talent. In terms of the way that he plays. Clubs no, 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 missed no. Lenny Hayes in the draft. Say it again. Lenny Hayes in the way that he plays. He's okay. A very good. He'll win. You know, he wins all of his own ball, but he also has adds run and carry off. I'm backing the back up line. Maddie here because I think that Saunders, his his heart and body, will come in to play, especially when Lenny Hayes retires, which is probably at this stage at the end of next year. He will fill that void. He won't be at Lenny Hayes. I don't think anyone ever will be. But as Maddie said, he's he's a heart and body who can who can scoop the ball out of the packs. Yeah, and with the last pick in round two, we went with pick 44 to Sydney, Harrison Marsh. Uh, he's a medium-sized defender, um, averaged 15.5 disposals and 4.4 marks for East Fremantle at Colts level. Um, uh, quite good defensive-wise um, and quite a solid pick. Um, Sydney finding some gems late. Yeah, I think this is a really good pickup. really. Another guy that sort of went under the radar. We've got an interview with Emma Quayle that we're going to have coming up now. We'll talk about heaps of different things that happened in last night's draft. Um, specific players we mentioned, specific clubs. It's a really good interview. Yeah, it's fantastic. So Emma Quayle. Just wondering, what was your biggest surprise from the draft last night? Well, I guess um, we have all these players picked, but someone who didn't get picked was Dale Gale. And he was, he was interesting leading into it because, um, you know, he's obviously a highly talented player and everyone probably would agree that he's a top 10 player on, on pure talent. But, you know, he's had some, some dramas off the field that really have the club's not picking him. So I think we're all sitting there towards the end waiting to see if someone would take the chance. And it was a bit surprising in the end that, that no one did. Just shows you how important, um, you know, the off-field stuff and character is to clubs these days. They just can't take a risk. Yeah. Um, you know, and they're putting two years and a lot of money into these kids. Yeah, you mentioned beforehand that, that ten odd clubs or something had instantly said no to picking him up. Um, do you think it's more maybe a club should kind of be accountable for him because that that sort of club culture can knock that childish behaviour out of kids like Garlett? Yeah, I think I think with Dale it goes beyond like the childish behaviour. Like there's some there's some serious concerns there, and uh, it's a bit of a mixture. I tend to think you know the players got to do their part because clubs can. Every club will provide a supportive environment, but if the player doesn't do their part, then, you know, what, it won't, won't amount to anything anyway. So I think that's what the clubs were worried with. They, they all knew what they could offer Dale, but they couldn't be sure whether Dale would come to the party as well. So they, in the end, decided they can't afford to take that risk. Now, hopefully he gets a rookie chance. If he doesn't, then 
we'll see what he does from here. It's kind of up to him from now. Like he's he's going to get a chance at some stage if he proves that he deserves it, and I hope he does because you know he'd be a really exciting player to watch at AFL level. Now, um, another surprise that I thought was uh, St Kilda, their stocks are down, uh, especially in, in key defence. Uh, they didn't take a key defender last night, but they went with Spencer White, who is obviously a key forward. So without picking a key defender, have they got any uh, anyone lined up in, in the gun to go in the pre-season draft or possibly a rookie if they make space on their list? Well, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I agree. I thought they'd try and grab a, a key back or two. I thought Tom Clary might be in the mix for them at pick 24 or 25, but they've obviously seen Spencer as a priority there. He's, he's an interesting one, Spencer. He, he could um, he could be anything, but, um, you know, he could go the other way as well. I think he's a, he's a really pretty kid, and what he can do is really exciting. So if they can get some consistency out of him, they could have a, a pretty good player. But you're right, it's hard, isn't it? Like, you know, because if they didn't get one of those picks, it was going to be less likely that they'd, they'd find one later on. So. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what they'll do, whether they'll um, try and rookie someone, whether they'll maybe switch a few guys around that they've already got and teach a couple to play down back. Maybe that's something that they'll have to do in the interim. Um, but, yeah, you're right, that's probably the one glaring area up there, at least where you look at it and think, oh, they're a little bit little bit short in that area. So, we'll see what happens. You mentioned before there were a lot of players that did miss out on getting drafted. It was Matty Haynes missed out, Andrew Boston, Jordan Burke, uh, Shannon Taylor, Jason Pongracic, Sam Culkin. You know, and they were all sort of touted to go, most of them, in, in the top 30 or 40, especially Culkin, who, who was AA, averaged 28 possessions off halfback. Um, can you sort of pinpoint why they might not have gone, especially considering they were touted as sort of top 40 players? Yeah, I think uh, it probably varies each of them. And they're a little bit unlucky, let's face it, because um, there are only a couple of clubs that really bought into this draft and had had a big pile of picks. Most sort of took their minimum or or three or four, and that was that was it. So there are only sixty six live picks. I mean, there's only sixty six live picks in a draft. You're going to get some guys who are just fortunate. On Grassic, I thought was really unlucky. I thought he would have got picked. He had a slow start because he, he's had some injury problems and probably never got going to the extent that. We all hoped he would, so he's a definite rookie chance. Sam definitely should get rookied up. I can't understand why he's missed out. He sort of played a loose role for the South Australian side in the under-18s, and I don't know if that um, sort of counted against him, whether recruiters wanted to see him play a role that was a bit more accountable. So, um, you know, but he's already training with Port Adelaide, I noticed today, so he'll end up somewhere. Matty Haynes, yeah, he's an exciting player. He's um, He's got lots sort of the pace and the run that clubs want. Um, Just on that, he did win a couple of gold medals um, as a 15 or 16 year old from memory. Uh, so he's quite yeah. athletic, so it's a bit surprising he didn't get a get a ch- opportunity last night. Yeah, I thought he might have been a late chance, but he was probably one that was always a little bit a little bit iffy. He probably needs to just improve his contested stuff and that would take him to the next level, but he's, a, he's another one who's a super quality kid, like, he's, you know, he's a real leader, so... Hopefully all those things combined mean someone gives him a go as a rookie and, and he's a, absolutely a chance to, to play AFL, I reckon, at some stage. So, yeah, I think it was just yeah, a combination of maybe a few little flaws and then when you have a draft where no one's really buying into it in a big way, you're just going to get a few who miss out. On that as well, uh, another one who took me by surprise that didn't get an opportunity last night as well was Andrew Boston. Now, he he tested incredibly well at the combine, especially in, obviously, the kicking areas of the testing and given the, the, where the game is at today, uh, so much revolves around field kicking and being able to hit a target whether you're under pressure or not uh, in any part of the ground. And for a guy who had so much ability who showed that for Queensland and again in the combine, do you think there's something else the recruiters are thinking that that's why he didn't get an opportunity last night? I don't think so. I think he's a little bit similar to Sam. He seems to have got, yeah, just said all the runs on the board and just has a go. Look, I sort of wonder if... Um because Queensland has been zoned to the Gold Coast for three years now, maybe maybe they just hadn't seen as much of him as they'd seen of someone else. So when they got to a late pick and a kid, they sort of put a heap of research in and they haven't done quite much on Andrew just because, you know, it hasn't been as worth their while to watch Queensland closely in the last few years. So maybe that's counted against him a little bit. I don't know, but, um, yeah, he, he certainly would be would be around the mark for a, a rookie a rookie spot as well. Definitely. Um there was quite a few AFL players, well, sorry, that have been delisted players that actually went into the, the draft and didn't get selected. Uh, a couple of names, obviously, Sam Lonigan and, and Kyle Reimers. Uh, 
do you think, obviously, because there's only 66 live selections of, of new talent coming into the system, that they're probably now bound for the pre-season or possibly the rookie draft? Yeah, probably, and, and they might miss out. I mean, I thought that was interesting, but we've had, because we've had free agency come in, like, clubs have already had their chance to sign those blokes if they wanted them, so um, I think a few of them were, were sort of waiting and seeing with their with their draft picks. I know Carson has been taking a little bit of a look at Kyle Reimers, but we're always thinking, well, we won't sign him as a dealer to free agent. We'll wait and see who's there in the draft and make our decision then. But um, given that they've already had a few weeks to sign anyone that they want, it always made me a little bit dubious that many would go in a national draft. So, yeah, it's, it's a stressful time for them, isn't it? Because um, all of a sudden their careers could be over. But hopefully there's going to be a few picks in the pre-season draft, not many, but hopefully... Um, couple of guys get another shot and you know you look at someone like Justin Sherman who two years ago was with all the talk of trade weeks and he was throwing big money at him and the Bulldogs did too when they got him and two years later he's um, probably not going to end up at another club so it can all end pretty quickly for these clubs. And there was a whole thing with Adelaide with them handing in their draft picks, which was just ridiculous. And But they still managed to, to pick up Rory Atkins with pick 81. Um, what are your thoughts on him sliding that far? Yeah, I thought he got a little early. I thought he could go in the second round. Um, He's another one who um, is very talented, but I think clubs are a bit unsure that he'll be able to adapt to the workload and the you know six days training every week and all the little things that come with being a football player. So, um, yeah, Rory, if he does all that and he adapts to it, he could be a really exciting player and they could have a good one on their hands there and he'll get found out pretty quickly if he doesn't. But I think Rory... I think it's actually a good thing that he's going to an interstate club. It'll all be about footy for him. He'll have to knuckle down. That'll be his whole life. So, you know, I hope I hope he does come good because he's got a lot going for him and he's pretty exciting to watch when he's up and running. So hopefully that works out. And that, that actually did okay, the Crows. Um, if, they, if there were two things they needed, it was probably sort of an outside skillful player and, and a key defender just to get some depth with Ben Rutten getting older. So to get Sam Siggins as well as Rory Atkins, I think it was a pretty good result for them. They're both... Obviously, you know, come with some flaws, getting picked up so late in the piece, but, you know, it was, it was probably a pretty good result, all things considered, for the pros. Also, uh, obviously, on that too, when uh, they handed in pick 20 and 54, that all of a sudden handed Collingwood three selections uh, consecutively. What what do you make of those three selections, especially with Brody Grundy, who was well touted to go top three, possibly top top ten, fell all the way out to 18, um, Ben Kennedy, who's also a dual Australian player, uh, could have gone in the GWS mini draft last year. And pick 20, who was a bit of a surprise as well, was Tim Broomhead, who I probably thought was in that second round. Uh, didn't expect him to go quite so high. What do you make of those selections? I think they're three pretty good picks. I mean, they are in a good position, weren't they? Having those three, which went they could mix and match a little bit, but also just waiting to see who actually came through to them. I know they were really keen on Taylor Garner as well, and North Melbourne took him, so... That meant someone else got pushed out and it ended up being Brody and, you know, it's perfect for them. They they sort of cleaned out their roughman at the end of the season, so they'll bring him in. He'll, he'll be able to play a few games next year and um, he's got a couple of years, you know, to, to get ready to play a full senior season. So, yeah, what a massive bonus. And Kennedy as well. I thought Kennedy should have gone a bit higher. You know, he can kick the ball. as well. He's not better than anyone else in the draft. He's a creative player. He kicks goals and all those sorts of things, so... He's a good pick-up as well, and, and Broomhead's a pretty solid player. He can play inside and out. He can go forward as well, so they like those versatile between us, Collingwood. And, um, you know, talking to talking to Derek Hine last night, he was he was very disappointed at not being able to get Spencer White as well. He was really keen to grab him at 20, but once they got Grundy, they probably didn't need that second tall. So um, it's interesting, you know, all the, all the stuff that does happen. Then, then you've got these sliding door moments where guys could end up at different clubs just, on how the order happens to pan out. But they did pretty well, Collingwood. I think they'd be really, really happy with with who they got in. And just finally, Emma, um, is there a player we haven't really heard much about that was selected last night that you think is going to have a real impact uh, on season 2013? Um, Not sure about season 2013. I think it'll be interesting to see how some of these mature age guys at Essendon and Melbourne have picked up. Um, You know, they've picked a couple of the 22-year-olds and and we'll see whether they can slot in and make make a difference to how their teams go. There's one, I, one player I actually quite like, um, Josh Saunders, and he's ended up at St Kilda at the end of the second round, I think. Um, yeah, end of the second round, and he didn't get much hype this year, but I actually thought he was pretty good. Um, sort of old, quick midfielder, so he's 
got a pretty strong body as well, so maybe he's one that can come in and, and do something for the Saints next year. And that was a great interview with Emma Quayle. Yeah, she told us a few good, uh, interesting facts about quite a number of things, including Cole Remus. Yeah, don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, we'll move on to round three in the draft. We're going to blitz through these. First pick was pick 45 with the West Coast. Brandt College. What a name. From Porth. From Porth. From Perth. Um, yeah, I don't have a clue anything about this. Has everybody heard about him? I've heard of him from the waffle that he's played a bit the last few years. <laughs> he looks like a good... Uh, midfielder for them. Uh, that's okay. about as much as I know, but he looks like he could come in and play some footy for them huge, next year. Huge slider. Pick 46 and killed a Tim Membry from oh, Gippsland. I Power. have massive wraps on this kid. He really Sydney. is the best. He's got the best hands in, in, the, in the competition. 54 this year. goals during the TAC He Cup was sensational. Well. He won't be tall enough to be a key forward. Probably a medium-sized forward. He'll dip into the midfield at times, but when he gets the ball, he is just super Look, dangerous. I shouldn't really mention anything because we have a crack at a lot of people. But I mean, that tattoo, this guy's tattoo—it is rubbish, mate. It, it, it looks like a finger painting. I'm just going to put that out so there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, we know it's been documented how shite. Kyle Reimer's tattoos are, but this one possibly <laughs> Takes the could cake. take the cake. North Melbourne, pick 47, Mitchell Wilkins. Ben, I don't know anything about him. Go no crazy. one does, and I think this is one of this is one of Bryce Lewis's experiments he's that he does. He's from Norwood, so he's got to be He's good. Norwood, uh, had shoulder issues, so he didn't make it Another to the... Another one for the shoulder club. Shoulder, there's a shoulder club out in North Melbourne. Um, yeah, he's defender, rebounder, good skills, you know, rated highly by his coaches. But aside from that, he's, he's a ghost. No one knows much about him. Pick 48, Melbourne Demons, Dean Kent from Perth. <laughs> oh, you chuckling, you're a child. Um, he's apparently a, a very uh, a very good reader of the play. I guess that's sort of what he's, Melbourne he's need because they've got a lot of... a fantastic player who Melbourne are going to love having Kent. <laughs> pick 49 Another two picks for the Bulldogs Back to back Pick 49 Pick 50 With 49 They picked Lockie Hunter This still is a bit of a slider An absolute steal <laughs> Oh Well okay He's a father well, son I, selection But I'm for the fact then. that No one really made the doggies No one cared no, but he's a, it's, it's, he's a decent player. I don't know why he's no a, one he's went He's a damn for him. good player. He's more than a decent player. He'll, he'll, he might play some footy for them next year. It wouldn't surprise me. Pick 50, the Bulldogs took Josh... Ooh, pick 50, Bulldogs took Josh Pruden from the Murray Bush Rangers. Another, I guess Another it's sort of getting to the he, point where I haven't got a clue where these people are. Yeah, it even surprised me a bit when his name popped up. Pruden? Pruden who? What? Yeah. Who is he? But every every year there's a few that no one knows who they are, and occasionally there are the ones this that is, actually surprise. And this you go, is oh. known as the recruiters' experiment, where they obviously uh, through someone have found out about a player and they've driven miles into you know into the country, into the country, into the wilderness, into the wilderness <laughs> to look and you know keep, and they keep it a secret. They, they don't tell anyone. They've out there by in, horse and carriage. We're seriously moving into unprofessional territory here because I haven't got a bloody clue who half these kids are. <laughs> Pick number fifty-one, Essendon, Dylan Van Unen from Frankston. I believe the uh, the most I know about him is. Oh God! Is everything's well, he's a mature he, age. He's a mature kid age recruit. I think oh, that's what okay. I've from Frankston. I get the jokes. Moving onwards, before oh. we get sued, pick fifty-two, <laughs> Melbourne Demons, Matt Jones from Box Hill Hawks, another one of the uh, the VFL guys that's going to step up. Had a great year for the Box Hill Hawks. Senior player. Senior player. He's twenty-five years yeah. old. So he's one of the oldest. I think he's the oldest pick so far, like up until that point. And I think maybe that'd... probably the oldest in the draft. Melbourne um, took a lot of a lot of their late picks. They really used them to. Um, to great effect. They picked the sort of senior players that could walk in. Pick 53. Another one for Essendon is Martin Kaleeson. This guy, we sort of know something about a little bit He's from North Ballarat. He's scrawny. Rebels. Scrawny. He's 70 kilograms, 186 centimetres tall. He is quite quite scrawny. He's he's very versatile as well, though. Um, maybe, but I guess, in a way, you could compare him to Goddard in that he, he moves around the sides of the field, so across the wings and the flanks quite well. Moving onwards, pick 54 for Carlton, Nick Graham from Gippsland Power. How the bloody hell did Carlton How the hell did Carlton, did he slip this far? That That's ridiculous. Morish medalist in the TAC Cup, I had him going at you know, late 20s, early 30s at the absolute latest. So Average Carlton's got a steal. 25, 25 disposals yeah. he averaged during he's the TAC Cup. That's unbelievable. And, and he, as you said, he's a Morrish medalist. Carlton have got, Pick, a, that's got a steal ridic- there. But there is a bit of a curse with the Morrish medalists. So. Oh, oh, please don't mention that. I'm a Carlton's <laughs> Pick 55, Gold Coast back in the action. Tim Sumner, they got from Woodville West Torrens. 
you look like you're about he's to got say heaps something. He's of X factor, Tim Sumner. He's another guy who's got an ability to break games open, very good by foot, and his vision's fantastic. He knows how to lower his eyes at the right time and doesn't ever blaze away. North Melbourne, pick 56, Daniel Carey from Sydney. Essentially the backup for Todd Goldstein if anything happens because, you know, there's no McIntosh there to fill the void now. So he's it, a premier ruckman in the yeah. Sanifel this year as well, and he's a, a huge boy and gets his second crack at AFL. The first of rules. many rookie upgrades coming up is pick 57, Gold Coast, Carl Horsley. They also had pick 58 in which they selected Clay Cameron, who was their, um, he's, their he's zone selection. He's a local selection. talent boy from, obviously, Labrador, and he's a great, great defender, uh, he if, was he, if he hadn't have been selected as a local talent, he would have quite easily gone in the second round. I can't. The names escape me at the moment. There were two blokes that, that Gold Coast chose him over, and those two guys are both fantastic talents. So Andrew it says a Boston lot. Boston and uh, well, there you go. And Jordan Burke. There you go. Thank you very much for backing my amateur ass up. <laughs> Pick fifty nine, West Coast. Adam Carter from South Fremantle. Very Again, much a same slider. local. He's yeah. a huge slider. Really had him going late, uh, probably late second. Average of seventy eight uh, percent disposal efficiency in the under 18 competition well, he's, a, he's a small they, they've got him as a small forward but I see him more as a, as a very good inside midfielder he has played a bit of that loose role as an outside and a bit of a loose forward who some would say he's a bit of a cherry picker but I think he's very good on the inside as well another pick for West Coast at pick 60 Mark Hutchings who is delisted from St Kilda Anybody? No? Looking yeah, straight over to you. He was on the rookie list, uh, I think, 2010. Didn't ever crack it for a game. He showed some good signs. Uh, I think he needed quite a bit more development than the club was willing to give him at the time. So um, he definitely has some promise. So hopefully he can crack it for a game at West Coast. Pick 61, North Melbourne, Taylor Hine, delisted from the Gold Coast Suns. Again, Daylight uh, robbery. Yes. Yep. <laughs> North Melbourne, Bryce with his list from those drafts. Um, Essentially, North Melbourne, uh, Frito is looking, you know, he's still playing some okay footy, but it, he's going to be on his way soon. So Taylor Hines, essentially, you know, that what they've got in mind for that sort of back pocket, who can also rebound role. Pick 62 was Adelaide joining the party, thing as they so courteously decided to give up their their draft pick. Sam Siggins from Lauderdale. I love Sam Siggins, and he... <laughs> Look, and a Tassie bloke who uh, we've given a bit of chop out to. Another Tassie defender, guys. Tassie, you know how well they it, went. That's it. And uh, look, Sam Siggins, he had a, a couple of injuries, but when he did play, he was so solid. He played some really good lockdown roles. He's a, and a very, very, very efficient kick of the football, and he's got great hands. We've taken the piss out of the, the Tasmanian defenders, but to get him at pick 62, it is, Adelaide, I really think to be a, a laughing. Steal. Pick 63 was passed by GWS. Pick 64, Sydney Swans. Matthew Dick, get your laughs out ahead of it. Um, extremely quick sort of kind of goes. Rebound defender, very young. Another colder boy. Another colder guy. He'll be a go. development player, but Dick's got a lot of talent. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> pick 65 was passed by the Sydney Swans. Over to pick uh, to pick round four. Hawthorne kicked things off uh, with pick 66 in Caden Brand. Yeah, I don't know who he is. He's a WA... Uh, <laughs> he's a key uh, forward. West Adelaide. Bit light. Um, West Adelaide. He's from? Yeah, oh, West Adelaide. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, look, we're, we're heading into we're nowhere territory. We're not gonna, let's not act like we you know anything. Right, WA, she meant WA, West Adelaide. Okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> six, six goals uh, against North Adelaide, NA, um, in round four. Um, uh, but, yeah, he's definitely quite good, so... Uh, pick number 67 was GWS again. They've passed. Pick 68, Dean Turlick, another Norwood kid who's going over to Melbourne. Now, I know a little bit about Dean Turlick, and he's not a bad selection for what they've got him. He's 23 years old. He's basically, I think Melbourne have done fantastic in, in selecting players. That, as I mentioned before, they the picks past pick 40. They've just selected guys that are senior players that are, won't, haven't played AFL before, but they're ready to walk into AFL football clubs. Well, they've done those pre-seasons in state leagues. They've, they've hit the gyms. They've played lots of football against other accomplished AFL players through the state leagues as well. So they've got, an, obviously, a better idea of where they're going to be... Need, sorry, where they're going to need to be at for Melbourne. 
Carlton passed with pick 69. What, oh, just ruining our that's fun. That's disgusting. Yeah, I know. That's a they, disgrace, Carlton. Uh, what yeah, are you doing? Ca- yeah, I was let down. Pick 70, back to They're Hawthorne. leaving that one for Kyle Ramers. <laughs> Stop it. Pick 70, Hawthorne, relisted Michael Osborne. We're moving into this sort of rookie territory. Two Melbourne picks with 71 and 72 used to elevate Daniel Nicholson and Michael Evans. Pick 73, Nicholas Comma for Essendon Football Club from East Perth. Again, another sort of unknown guy. I guess we're moving in that sort of territory. This when- kid is really hard at the ball yep. uh, has been has played quite well this year obviously is more of a project player but it wouldn't surprise me if he held down a key post in Essendon's defence in the next few years Carlton again passing with pick 74 pick 75 to St Kilda Lewis Pierce from Dandenong Stingrays I think maybe you could call this kid a slider in a way yeah he was touted to go quite a bit higher I would think end of third round early fourth round. He's built like a bean pole. He's very <laughs> he's very thin and he obviously what an oxymoron. built has, like a bean pole. <laughs> he obviously has a lot of uh, work to do in the gym, but he does have a lot of talent. He's very quick and he has very good hands um, as well. So hopefully he can be that uh, backup ruckman to McAvoy and Hickey that the Saints are looking for. Pick 76, North Melbourne used to elevate Sam Gibson. Pick 77, Geelong, Bradley Hartman from Sturt. Does anybody know about this kid? No. All right, moving on. (laughs) Pick 78, Clancy Pierce, Fremantle, rookie elevated. Pick 79, West Coast Eagles elevated, Brad Dick. Pick 80, Collingwood have passed on. Now, here's the hilarious one. Pick 81, Adelaide, Rory Atkins. How the bloody hell they got this kid? Cash machine sound I think, effect. I mean, maybe <laughs> surely they knew when they were handing in I those mean, picks that they were going to get a couple of gems with their two selections. I mean, pick eighty-one. That's incredible. It was mentioned in Collingwood. What are you doing? You're passing on with, the pick before. We were talking with Emma Quayle before, and we asked her about this as well, and she was as surprised as we were. That's incredible. I think honestly, steal of the draft. He's easily. a massive Crows fan too. Which well, there is you interesting go. To know. Essendon. At 34, we're very keen to take Rory before they took their obvious other selection. Pick 82, Port Adelaide passed with. Start of round five, we're getting into junk time right here. Pick 83, uh, GWS has picked Sam Frost, who another rookie elevation. Pick 84, Western Bulldogs have passed. Pick 85, Port Adelaide elevated Tom Jonas. Pick 86, Bu- uh, Bulldogs, Brisbane have elevated Jack Crisp. Richmond passed with their selection at pick 87. Pick 88 was used on Sean Gregory for Essendon from the Calder Cannons. Another mature age lad. He's yep. a, a gold Mature picker age? As well. He's, he's uh, 18. I've gotten him mixed up with. <laughs> we'll just cut that they, part out. From what I've heard about this kid, they see him as being the next Dutch and Dustin Fletcher prototype. He's very. That's not something. To he's <laughs> able to play on lots of different types of roles. He's very durable. He's obviously a lot much of a project player, so he'll need some development first. But yeah, he's got some talent. Where's he from, by the way? He's from Calder. Calder. Ah, this was the one. That remember we were being this told was about the one. three this months was ago. The remember one. one of one of our panelists came in before the show and he told us about how Essendon were very interested in a in a player from Melbourne uh, from you know Victoria who was a um, a Dustin as you said a Dustin Fletcher uh, replacement. Well, he's, he's tall and skinny, so I can see how you can sort of get that <laughs> that um, that similarity between them. Pick 89 from Carlton, rookie elevation for Levi Casbolt. Pick 90, we're getting into all the elevations here, I'm just going to race through them. Pick 90, St Kilda elevated Sam Donnell. Pick 91, North Melbourne elevated Aaron Mullet. Pick 92, Geelong elevated Jesse Stringer. 83, Fremantle used to elevate Lee Spur. 94, Collingwood Marley Williams. 95, Adelaide Ian Callanan. Ian Callanan's a fantastic get, by the way, as far as senior senior pickups go. Mm-hmm. Uh, to round out round five, Sydney passed on their pick 96. Uh, more rookie elevations for pick round six. 97, Andrew Phillips elevated to GWS Giants. 98, Western Bulldogs elevated Tom Campbell. 99, Bulldogs elevated Noel McKeever. Passes for both Richmond and Essendon at 100 and 101. Zach Tui elevated for Carlton at 102. Magic Door elevated at 103, probably the most useless, worthless elevation, seeing as to a guy who doesn't necessarily deserve it, but that's for another day. Burn. Sydney passed with 104, 
James J- Jason, yes, you Western Bulldogs. Jason, Jason Joe Hannison. <laughs> too many J's. of t- saying too many words. Elevated for the Bulldogs at 101. 106 used to elevate. Mark Bagley from Essendon. And to round it out, 107. Harry Cunningham elevated to the Sydney Swans senior list. That just about rounds it up. We're completely pushing our time limit right here. Uh, hopefully we've gone through and given you some or a little bit of insight into these things. At least maybe, hopefully, made you chuckle at how stupid and amateur we are as far as knowing who's who. Yeah, and I, I think you heard enough from us for the time being anyway. We'll be back next year. Next this year. Will, this will most likely be our last show for the year, so we'll definitely have something happening over in the pre-season. Is this what we say Merry Christmas to people? Well, yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, might, you might see us maybe, maybe. in another, another time, another maybe. place, maybe. Yeah, can't say too much, but yeah. We'll be watching you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> bring that one big in. brother over now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. If you've made it this far, then... Um, yeah, thank maybe you. we can think of some prize to give you or something. But thank you very much for listening to Bound for Glory. I'm invincible. I'm paying money. Uh, the girl's happy. She's got no money. I got my rocks off. Oh, how good is this?